In this tutorial, we will learn the basics of Squish GUI Tester. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to get an idea of how to use Squish and test automation. Furthermore, you will see how you can build a good test framework using reusable common scripts. First, we will create a test suite. A test suite is a collection of one or more test cases. Using a test suite, we can group related test cases together. To create a new test suite, click on New Test Case button. Select the destination folder to store your test suite and enter a name. Then, select the scripting language that you want to use. Finally, specify the application you under test, or, the AUT. In this tutorial, we will be using the address book application which is available in examples folder of Squish. Now that we have a test suite, we will add a new test case. You can do this by selecting Create a new script case in the Test Cases panel. Have a look at the sections below the Test Cases panel. Test Case Resources section holds resources that are available only to the selected test case. Test Suite Resources section holds resources that are shared between all the test cases in the test suite. Steps.js file in the test case resources holds the test script. Names.js file in the test suite resources section holds the object names, or, the script-based object map. Let's record a simple test case. In this test, I will start address book application, add a new file and then add a new record to that file. You can start recording a script by clicking record button in the test case. When the recording starts, Squish IDE will hide in background and the AUT will start along with a control panel holding recording options. While recording we can insert comments to make our recorded script much clearer. I will add a comment before creating a new address book file. And then, I will add a new file by selecting menu item new in the file menu. Each of my actions is recorded by Squish. I will also add a new record by selecting the menu item add in the edit menu and then, enter values to each field. Now, I want to verify that the table has one record. I can do this by adding a properties verification point. To do this, click drop down arrow icon next to verify, in the control bar and select properties. Upon selecting, Squish IDE will appear again. Now, click on the picker tool and then click the table in the address book application. You will again end up in the Squish IDE. The object that you just picked with the picker tool will be visible in the application objects page. Now, expand the object to find the table inside it. Select the table object to see all of its properties. Scroll down in the list of properties to find the attribute, row count. Check the row count property and click save to add the properties verification point. We will stop recording here since we have reached the end of our test plan. This is the test that we just recorded. Note that the test script is inside a JavaScript function called main. Main function is the starting point for which Squish will look for, when running a test case. One test case can have only one main function. In the line number 4, application starts. Line number 5 shows the comment that I added during recording. In the line number 6 and 7, I am clicking new submenu in the file menu. Line number 8 is the comment that I added just before clicking the add submenu in the edit menu, which is shown in the line 9 and 10. Lines 11 through 20 contains the data entering part and the line 21 clicks the OK button in the data entry dialog. Finally, line 22 is the properties verification point we added to verify that the number of rows is 1. Now, we will clean up and modify the recorded script to make it more readable and maintainable. If you look at the data entry part in the script, 
there are a few tab key presses. These are not needed for executing the script, so we can remove them. In addition to that, there are a few lines in the script with backspace key press. This was to correct a typing mistake that I made during the recording. We can remove unwanted typings and keep only what is required. So, our refined script will finally look like this, much readable. Isn't it? Now, we will run the test case by clicking the play button in front of the test case. After finishing the execution, Squish will display test results for the properties verification point. We will again look at our test script. Each of the lines starts with a function name. Start application, activate item, type and click button are built in functions of Squish. Each of these functions accepts some arguments. For example, start application function accepts the file name of the executable program file as an argument. Type function accepts a GUI object and a string to type inside that object. Click button function accepts a GUI object only. Furthermore, wait for object is another built-in function of Squish that helps to capture a GUI object. Have a look at the argument of wait for object function. Address book add okj OK button refers to a captured object that is imported into a variable called names. If you look at the line 1, it imports all the objects from our names.js file, or, the script-based object map. Then inside our script, we can refer to those object by calling names.object name. So, in line 18, names.address book add okj OK button recalls the object ok button, from the script-based object map, and passes it as the argument for the wait for object function which then becomes the argument of click button function. If you open the names.js file in the test suite resources section, you will see all the objects that were captured during recording. Each object has a name and has a few attributes that are used to uniquely identify these objects. Each of these attributes are there in the form of name value pairs. You can always modify these objects manually by adding or removing attributes, or, by renaming objects to more familiar names. Now what if I want to add another record to the address book? I can choose to record adding another record or simply copy and paste the existing code related to the adding of a record, and modify the values that I enter. I will also modify the verification point by setting 1 to 2, since now we have two records in the table. Now, if I run this test case, it will add two records to the table and verify that there are two records. Although my script works fine, it has duplicated lines of code to do the same thing. I can move these duplicated, or, reusable segments of scripts into functions. When I put the relevant code inside a function, I can reuse those functions without having to duplicate large number of lines in the code. Carefully look at how I replace my code with calls to reusable functions. Now we have a lesser number of lines to achieve the same. I will add yet another function to create a new address book file. If I run the script again, it will now execute without any change to the previous execution. But, all the modifications we did in behind will help us to improve the readability, reusability and maintainability of the script. Instead of calling add new record function in a new line for each record you want to add, you can also use an array to hold your test data and then make use of a for loop to pass data to the function. To do this, I will first add an array holding my data, then I will define a for loop to call add new record function with different data. This time, instead of four values separately, I am going to pass the whole row of my data array to it. I will also modify my verification point to dynamically check the number of records with the increasing number of rows that are being added. Let's modify the add new record function to accept a data row from array. Now when I run the script, it will add two rows and verify the record count twice.
When you have a large number of reusable functions, it is difficult to remember all the function names when you need to use one of such functions. One of my suggestions is to group such functions together by the relevance of those functions to the AUT. In other words, you can group reusable functions together by the screen that they relate to. This is how I will do it. Carefully look at how I create a new JavaScript object for the address book screen and move all my related functions into it. Then, I can call these functions in the script by just remembering the name of the screen they belongs to. This is a good idea when you need to build an easy to use test framework. Also not that I am adding test.log functions to each of my steps. This will help me in reading the test report since all the actions that were performed are logged into it with values. So, when something goes wrong, we can easily reproduce them by looking at the test report. I am also adding comments to my sub functions. When I execute my test now, it will run and produce a more detailed report with the logs that I added to my functions. Instead of using an array to pass data to the tests, we can also use tab separated value, or TSV files. Here, I have created a TSV file in the test case resources section and added my values to it. Then I have modified my script and add new record function to iterate through each row of the file and use those data in the test. With this knowledge, let's go a step further. In the beginning of this tutorial, I mentioned that we have separate levels of resources. Test case resources that are only to be used by the particular test case, and test suite resources which are shared among all test cases in the given test suite. What if you need to share resources among the test suites? In other words, how to share reusable functions and objects among any test suite. Squish calls this concept as global scripts. With global scripts, you can share resources, files or functions with any test suite that you run with Squish. This is how you do it. First, create a folder in the global scripts section. Add two new files. I will use one file to store functions that belongs to address book screen. And another file to store all the objects that belongs to address book screen. Now, I will move all objects from names.js in the test case resources section to address book map.js file. After doing the move, we need to tell the test suite to look for the objects in address book map.js file in addition to the names.js file of that suite. Then, go to the test script and move all the functions that we grouped under address book to the address book.js file in global scripts. Since we use object names from the newly created address book map.js file, we need to add an import statement on top of the address book.js file. Now, instead of names.js, it should refer to the address book map.js file. Finally, since we are calling global script functions from address book.js file, we need to add a reference to that file at the beginning of our test script. We do this by using source function. Now, if I run my test case again, it will be the same as before. But only you and I know that we now have a simple test framework that allows us to share functions and objects among any number of test suites. Try to practice the structure that we discussed in global scripts and apply it into your test frameworks. Having all GUI objects in a central place will help you to quickly modify and fix any changes without touching any of the functions or scripts. On the other hand, as you group functions together into objects by the area of GUI or the screen that they belongs to, you can easily identify and map GUI changes without affecting any of your existing scripts. And above all that, you can create test scripts purely by hand using predefined functions, without recording or even looking at the GUI. Wow! Isn't it?